Athletics came easily to Brett Bielema early on in his life, but he still worked hard to elevate himself into a Big Ten caliber player. His coaching career has followed a similar path. The diligence and hard work have taken him close to the mountaintop, but he's really just been refining characteristics he displayed as a youth. Well, he was always he was a leader during wrestling. He was a complete leader by practice or by his uh, not, not only by what he does, but also by how he would coach and help his you know as a senior he'd help freshmen and sophomores and was a very strong leader very early. The challenge for him was, you know, what's next? What's more? Because he was athletic and he could achieve a lot of what was going on there. The key is what is it beyond just being an athlete? What does it mean to really be a leader? He absorbed that, he walked it. As a successful college football player, Brett Bielema first entertained thoughts of becoming a coach during his time at Iowa. After a seven day stint in the NFL and a month in the Arena League, Hayden Fry gave him that opportunity. He saw me in the training room and he said, can you come see me tomorrow after like one o'clock? And I'm like, sure coach, you know, I'll do whatever. And uh, I always tell the story, which is honest to the truth. Um, I, you know, I had like 20 bucks in my checking account and, and that's what I want to live off of. I was, uh, at the time, was, I had an apartment that I was sharing with a couple other guys and I went to an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet for buck ninety-nine. Um, from 10.30 to 1.30 you could eat all you want and, and uh, uh, when I was getting up and leaving from that table about 12 o'clock there was a fortune cookie that I opened and it said Confucius says choose a job you love and never work a day in your life and I went from that meal to go meet with Coach Fry and he offered me that position and that's where it started and I never looked back. And you've never forgotten that fortune cookie? Never forgot it. I had it. I had it too when I moved from Iowa State to Can from Iowa to Kansas State. I had it in a, in a special place and I can't find that thing for the life of me. In 1994, Bielema started as a graduate assistant in the weight training program, one of the lowest rungs on the coaching ladder. But he was hooked instantly. I was mesmerized. Um, I remember uh, they gave me a film assignment and uh, Coach Bill Brazier was was um, the defense coordinator at the time, and he gave me an assignment, and um, it, he gave it to me on a Friday, and I remember I got it all done over the weekend, had it laying on his desk on Monday, and he came in and he said, well, I thought that was going to be your spring project. He gave it to me for like a couple months, but it was so cool for me to work the numbers, and that was before computers, and so I was statistically doing it with literally like striking pencil marks, you know, and, uh, and adding them up and getting percentages and reading keys and getting tendencies, and it was just it's something that blew me away. I eventually progressed out of just the weight room to just full-time GA on the field. I was working with the linebackers, um, and then uh, after my first two seasons, after a year and a half as a GA, uh, uh, Coach Fry appointed me an interim linebacker coach. Oh, he was unreal. He. Uh... He was uh, exceptional, and a lot of my ex uh, players became grad assistants. And Coach Billman never missed a meeting, and he was always there. And when Coach Brazier or myself got through discussing different things in regards to this is how we're going to play defense this week, etc., Brett always had an idea. And sometimes he'd get up to the blackboard and he'd diagram what he wanted, now, even though he was just a grad assistant. And either me or Coach Brazier would say, Coach Bilma, that's well, that's wonderful. That's real good. But we've been there, done that. It won't work. <laughs> but he was trying. <laughs> well, he always had an idea, and most of them were real good. But when you're that young, you know, you, you have to have experience. Bilma coached linebackers under his idol for three seasons. Then in 1998, Fry retired. This is just a plaque that they gave me at the University of Iowa, 20 years of excellence. And that was, my whole career was turning losers into winners. I remember I was just devastated. This is a guy that had done more for me in my lifetime than anybody other than my father. Um, and, and it really kind of blew me away. And then I remember calling my mom later on and, and I was kind of really emotional and saying that Coach Fry was going to retire. And she's like, well, do you have a job? And I'm like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that, you know, because that was my livelihood. And fortunately for me, Kirk Ferentz was hired and he retained me. And, uh, and then I worked for him for several years before I went to Kansas State. In 2002, another Fry disciple, Bill Snyder, offered him a promotion as co-defensive coordinator at K-State. But the emotional Bielema 
had a hard time letting go of the familiar and taking on a new venture. I wasn't going to do it, and then ironically, Coach Alvarez and Bobby Stoops got me at a national coaches convention. They had heard that I'd been offered this job to work with Coach Schneider at Kansas State, and they asked me what I was going to do. I said, I'm probably not going to take it. I think I'm just real comfortable at Iowa. I was a former captain, you know, all this good stuff, all these positive vibes, and, and they kind of said, you need to do this. You need to go beyond Iowa City. You need to grow uh, and become something bigger than what you are. I remember it was, I was leaving the football office at Iowa. It was 5 o'clock in the morning. And I had a GA taking me to the airport and I was I was a mess. I was crying and almost almost turned around and went back in and, and pulled a resignation letter off my desk because I, I really uh, almost flipped right there. But didn't look back and went and had a great couple of years there at Kansas State and then obviously the opportunity to go to Wisconsin was there and again another really hard move for me but one I'm glad I did. After two seasons yet another Fry protege, Barry Alvarez, offered Bielema another chance to rise in the ranks. He would get the keys to the defense as the solo coordinator. The move also returned him to his roots in the Big Ten and closer to his hometown. A perfect situation. We were really good. Um, through the first nine weeks, I think we were number one in the country in like five of the top seven categories. And, uh, you know, we were very, very talented. Um, had a great defensive staff with me as well. And uh, we were able to do some good things. And I think that's when he really said, hey, this guy's got his ducks in a row. Let's give him an opportunity to run the whole show. Tell me about when he called you in to say, I'm stepping down and I'm appointing you. Yeah, it was a, a big moment, um, one that I uh, will never forget. Bielema won 12 games in his first year as a head coach and has continued to enjoy high levels of success. But it shouldn't come as a surprise. He's the fruit of four very prominent coaching trees. Here's Coach Bielema right here. And there's Coach Alvarez, both. Coach Alvarez three times in a Rose Bowl, and of course Brett would have been three times had he stayed not taking the Arkansas job. Aiden Fry by far is a, is a, is a player's coach. He, 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 uh, he gets you to play at a higher level because you want to play for him. And um, you know, I, you can ask my former players, uh, I guess more than me, but I, I always thought if we can take a player to a higher level of success than he ever thought possible, then we're really truly coaching. You know, I see so many coaches today that are just tied up in, the, in that, what we call the X's and O's the formation, the plays, and so forth, and they forget that the young man that's got to execute that is the most important thing, and you have to be very sensitive to the players. You have to be a good listener, and uh, Brett's that kind of guy. I would say he's a player's coach, but he definitely knows how to put his foot down. He runs a very tight ship, uh, you know, no lateness. Uh, you always got to be on time, keep your grades up, and everything believe, he believes uh, revolves revolves to football. How about Kirk Ferentz? Kirk always taught me, you know, there's a lot of people in this world can hear, but very few people listen. Um, and I think that's a thing that I really take pride in is making sure that I'm listening to what everybody has to say and truly processing it. Bill Snyder has as impressive of a coaching tree as anybody out there. You're part of that. What did he instill in you? I always say that Coach uh, Snyder had the philosophy to leave no stone unturned and then go do it again. Uh, you know, that's that's his work ethic, his attitude. He's a relentless uh, worker in the details of the game. Um, really taught me that side of it. You know, I really grew as a coach under Kirk, uh, you know, because I began to get good at X's and O's, but Snyder really taught me how every detail of every day matters. Barry Alvarez. Coach Alvarez put it all together. He was the... Uh, dynamic personality that can lead not only an athletic uh, department, but really a whole program. And that brings us to today. After seven seasons at Wisconsin, Brett Bielema takes the reins at Arkansas, and Hog fans will soon come to learn just how he likes his teams to play football. When you as a man hear another man say you took their manhood, that, that's, 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 that's caveman stuff, man. That's medieval times. The new regime of Razorbacks has begun, but it's remarkably similar to one of the older regimes. We'll connect the dots after the break.